Hey there friends, what's going on? It's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming and another video for Aliens Fireteam Elite. We have gotten a lot of questions about the four brand new weapons introduced as part of Season 1, and we thought it would be smart to put together a video showing you guys where these weapons excel, where they have some drawbacks, and how to build them out to be the most effective version of the weapon for you. Now we did get all four of these weapons, and if you didn't already know this, you can pick them up from the armory. I believe they cost 9600 credits each, so you may have to do a little bit of farming, but they're all worth picking up. They're interesting, they're different, they've got their quirks, but let's just dive in and talk about them one at a time so you guys know how we're building them to be most effective on the battlefield. Now the first weapon I want to talk about is the L33 Pike. This is the pinnacle sniper rifle in the game. It's got the highest single shot damage of any weapon currently in Aliens Fireteam Elite. 1300 damage, that is a staggering number, and with each star perk we get a little bit stronger. As you guys can see in the bottom left hand corner, the three stars will give us plus 15 accuracy, and this weapon is close to capping out at 100%. Absolutely insane weapon. We're going to talk about the attachments, of course, but already at a baseline, we're talking about a high threshold for accuracy. That four star perk is a bit underwhelming in my opinion. You get plus 1% weak point damage and stability on hit for three seconds, and this effect stacks five times. Now, that's okay, you're gonna end up with plus 5% weak point damage and stability. If you're hitting enemies, you can stack that up, but it's not foolproof. If you guys are not landing every single shot because of the slow fire rate of the pike, you're probably not going to see that benefit all the time. Now, if you're in a swarm and you've got a million enemies around you and you're landing shots left and right, you will see some benefit there. This rifle just excels in the hands of players that are top tier. If you have high levels of accuracy, I'm talking 60, 70, maybe even 80%, this is the weapon for you. If you're someone like me that's below 50%, then maybe not. You are gonna still see some viability out of this weapon, just not so much as someone who's really talented when it comes to landing headshots and just staying on target more often than not. In terms of mods, we have three things here, and we're really focused on weak point damage and getting back into ADS as quick as possible. We're using the calibrated hider here. This is going to increase our weak point damage by 20%, and increase our handling by 30%. Now for anyone that doesn't know, handling decreases the time it takes to equip the weapon, the time to enter ADS, and the accuracy penalty while moving. I want high handling on this weapon because it's a single shot, then you have to reload, then you have to go back into ADS. The higher my handling, the easier that transition is going to be. So it makes sense to go with the calibrated hider, which has a very high plus 30% to handling, and of course that weak point damage if you're landing weak point shots with a sniper rifle, especially one like the Pike that's got insanely high damage, you're going to absolutely melt enemies. Moving over to the next mod, we have an internal magazine, not a standard magazine, one of the internal ones. And this time we're going with reload speed, the rapid dispersal unit. This increases our base reload speed by 25% and gives us plus 10% to reload speed for eight seconds on hit. And this effect stacks up to four times. The reason why I like this particular magazine is because of the long duration effect of that perk. Eight seconds to land some hits to stack the effect four times is a decent window, especially when you could probably miss a shot, maybe even miss two shots and still make it inside of that window to stack the reload speed. And because you're pulling the bolt every single time reloading after every Every shot, the higher your reload speed, the sooner you can get back into ADS, and of course, if you have high handling, that's going to make that transition even smoother. So you can maybe start to see how the pieces are coming together. In terms of the large optics, I am not changing things up. I do not like the fully replaced ADS in this game, so I'm going with the digital scope. This increases our accuracy by plus 20%. Weak point damage by plus 15%, handling that magical stat by plus 20%, and zoom magnification, a paltry plus 10%, which is exactly what I want. At the end of the day, we have a supercharged L33 Pike with incredibly high damage. We've got laser sharp accuracy, a decent handling bonus, and of course, that really strong weak point damage. Moving over to the L59 minigun, this was actually my first real taste with a minigun or heavy weapon in the game because I didn't play a lot of Demolisher, but it gave me a good opportunity to really compare this weapon with the smart gun. And what you're actually going to find is that the smart gun is good in certain instances, but when you want damage, when you want a faster reload speed and you want more weak point damage, you're gonna go with the L59 minigun. 
As with most miniguns, the more you fire it up, the more it winds up, the more accurate it gets. So it starts off a little unwieldy, but as you fire it, it gets laser sharp. And of course, this weapon, like I said, has a higher damage threshold than the smart gun. So if you're looking for an alternative to that weapon, here you go. Of course, it doesn't have smart bullets. You're not going to automatically track targets, but it's a stronger weapon when it comes to just face value damage. In terms of the star perks here, we've got increase to charge time, increase to fire rate, another increase to charge time, and then a plus 0.5% fire rate on shot. This effect stacks up to 20 times. That's going to give us a total of plus 10% fire rate if you're landing all of those shots and you get max stacks. That's not a bad weapon. You're gonna increase that fire rate, and that's a good thing because the L59 minigun actually has a lower base fire rate than the smart gun. So by giving you some fire rate boosts, you're actually getting it more in line to what you might be expecting if you're someone that's really used to the smart gun. In terms of attachments, let's start with the large muzzle, and in this case, we're using the counterbalanced brake. This is going to increase our stability by 30%, which reduces our recoil, but it's that plus 5% accuracy on hit for five seconds, stacking five times that I'm really interested in. This means I could get plus 25% accuracy as long as I'm hitting targets. And with a minigun, of course you're gonna be hitting targets. That accuracy is really important because the minigun has a pretty low base accuracy as it is, so I wanna boost that wherever possible. For a barrel, we're using the hybrid rifling. This is going to increase our fire rate by 20% and stability by 30%. I feel like there's a couple other options here. You could maybe go with the Miller twist to give yourself a little utility with that chance on hit to slow enemies, but I really like these high numbers for fire rate and stability that are just going to make the weapon at a base level that much better. For the armature, we're using the quick charge armature, which increases my reload speed by 25% and increases my fire rate and stability on hit for five seconds. Now this effect doesn't stack, but that's okay because we're already boosting our fire rate and stability in other places. And as you can see at the end of the day, with everything attached, we've got a really strong L59 minigun with solid damage, a decent fire rate, okay accuracy and stability, and we're really making the most out of this weapon, dealing as much damage as we can, and as everybody knows, that is the name of the game when you're playing a demolisher. Let's move over and talk about the Type 88 Heavy Assault Rifle, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I really didn't like this weapon at the end of the day. Sure, it's got a higher baseline damage than the other assault rifles in the game, but the other things that it lacks, like a reload time, a magazine capacity, and weak point damage, just make it kinda weird in my opinion. It's a cool looking weapon, it is in line with the Weyland yutani stuff, which is neat if you like that sort of thing, but overall, the weapon just lacked a little bit of punch. It was a bit unwieldy when shooting, it got very wild, and unless you really focus on accuracy, you're gonna find that you really can't control this the way that you want to. That being said, there is a way to build it out to be an effective weapon, but before we get to the attachments, let's start with the perks. We get plus 10% to effective range by getting the two star, and then we get plus 5% to fire rate with the three star, and for the four star, we get plus 1% to fire rate and range on hit, and this effect stacks five times, giving us plus five to fire rate and range. So as you can see, that's where the developers are leaning us to, effective range, and fire rate. The weapon itself doesn't actually have a bad damage fall off chart. It's okay in line with the other rifles in the game. But again, something just doesn't feel quite right. The way we offset this is with the mods, of course. And for the muzzle, we're using the ported compensator, which increases our fire rate and stability by 30%. The weapon does have a little bit of a kick, so increasing our stability helps keep that in line. And of course, as you saw with the star perks, the developers want us to do fire rate. So we're gonna lean into fire rate even more. Of course, the more you increase your fire rate, the sooner you're gonna run out of ammo. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. And of course, we're doing that with the magazine. We're using the casket magazine, which is increasing our fire rate by 20% and our max ammo, that means our ammo reserve, by plus 35%. And without this, we have a standard 450 ammo count. With it, we have 608 rounds. So this is a really sizable difference. For the medium optics, we're using the red dot sight, which just increases our accuracy by 15%, our weak point damage by 15%, our effective range by 15%, and doesn't give us much of a zoom magnification, which is a good thing. At the end of the day, you're going to figure out very quickly if you like this weapon or hate this weapon. I did not find it to be that effective. I found other things in the game to just be a better option. Maybe the Kramer Assault Rifle, maybe the Pulse Rifle. This one just did not cut it for me, but hey, maybe you like it, and if you found a better loadout, let me know in the comments section because I am all about trying to figure out how to make weapons work the best way that they possibly can. 
In the same vein, talking about weapons that kind of let you down, let's talk about the N79 EVA laser. Really cool weapon, terrible execution. This is a single shot weapon that uses an internal battery. There's no ammo. It uses an overheating mechanic to basically shoot out laser beams and try and take down targets. The problem is it's very easy to overheat this weapon. Even if you are super disciplined, you're still going to run into problems where you're either getting swarmed and this weapon isn't effective or you're overheating your weapon. And again, weapon's not effective. Now with four stars, this does get a little bit better. You have plus 5% heat regen for one star, plus 5% charge time for two stars. Again, another plus 5% to heat regen for three stars. And the four star gives us a plus 5% charge time and weak point damage on kill for five seconds. This is kind of like a poor man's sniper rifle in a sense. It does have incredibly high accuracy and stability, doesn't have a lot of kick at all. You're going to be able to do a decent amount of damage. 504 damage is nothing to sneeze at. The problem is you just can't shoot off enough rounds to make that much of an impact in a lot of scenarios. Where is the EVA pistol really good? Against synth targets because there's very little damage fall off and it's very easy to hit their heads. They have much more predictable movements when you're fighting Xenomorphs, that's just not the case, and this weapon is not that great. Of course, we are going to try and make it better with the attachments, and for the medium muzzle, we're using the Precision Break, which increases the weak point damage by 20% and the effective range by 30%. In terms of batteries, well, you can't actually change this out. That's the module that replaces ammo with this overheat feature. Finally, for the medium optics, we're using the green dot sight, which increases our weak point damage by 20% and our effective range by 30%. You could, of course, use the red dot, but I find that you have plenty of accuracy already, so I'd rather go and double down on weak point damage and effective range. Like I said before, this weapon is kind of a poor man's sniper rifle. If you're a super accurate player, maybe you find it to be useful in some scenarios, but at this point, I just don't find it to be that effective. I would love it to have some sort of like plasma pistol effect from Halo where you can charge it up to do incredible amounts of damage, maybe do elites, but it doesn't quite check off enough boxes to make me want to use this weapon over something like the Kramer 50 Cal or the Twin Hammer. It's an okay weapon, okay idea, it just doesn't rise to the level of the other pistols in the game. So there you have it, friends, the four new weapons in the game and how I build them out to be as effective as I can make them. If you guys have suggestions on how you would build them out or how you change things up to make them even better, let me know in the comments section. And of course, if you guys like everything we're doing here at Legacy Gaming, we would love your support. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We will have more Aliens Fireteam Elite content coming your way and you do not want to miss out. We also invite you to join us on Discord. We've got a great community of around 7,000 members with a special section dedicated just for Aliens Fire Team Elite. So check out the link in the description to join today. Finally, if you guys like everything we're doing here and you want to help us out even more, you can now do so by becoming a member. For just a couple bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to that next level. Check out the join button below to learn more. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.